There are two special classes of transformation, injective and surjective transformation. Some transformations are even both injective and surjective, or equivalently one-to-one -one and onto. But what does this mean? Injectivity means that every vector in V, our domain, has a unique image in W. So no vector in W is mapped to twice. If this is V and this is W, if we pick two vectors, they have to land in two separate spots. If the image of V1 equals the image of V2, this implies that V1 must equal V2. One consequence of this is that the kernel of the transformation, this is all the vectors that map to the zero vector in W, this can only be one dimensional. The zero vector in V maps to the zero vector in W, not any more than that. This is the case when the rank of our matrix, A, let's say A is M by N, is N, meaning that every single column has a leading one. Or equivalently, if the row space of the matrix of the transformation is Rn. Just a reminder, the row space is the span of the rows in our matrix, we would need at least n vectors. So this means that there has to be at least n rows, if not more. This is where we get that n is equal to or less than m. Remember that the matrix of our transformation, if it's m by n, will be going from Rn to Rm. This means that the dimension of V, which is N, must be equal to or less than the dimension of W in order for this to be true. Visually, this would look like the spaces are either the exact same or it could be the case where V is smaller than W, so we're going from a small space to a big space. Next, what does surjectivity mean? This means that the entire codomain W is reached. If we transform our vector V, we get W, a vector in our codomain for each V that's in vector space V and W that's in our vector space W. Another way to put this would be that the image of the transformation is the whole space, the whole codomain. When will this be true? Again, if we have an M by N matrix that represents the matrix of the transformation. This is true when the rank of this matrix is M. There's a leading one in every single row. You could also express this as full rank, which means just that. This is also equivalent with saying the column space of our matrix A is Rm. Remember that the column space is the number of leading columns in our matrix. In order for the column space to equal Rm, we need to have at least m columns, if not more. This is why n must be equal to m or greater than m. In other words, the dimension of our domain, V, is equal to or greater than the dimension of our codomain. If we start with a big V and then go to a smaller W, the whole space would be reached so we would have surjectivity. A bijective transformation is both injective and surjective. If we're going from a big space to a small space, there would have to be repeats, so the transformation would not be injective. If we're going from a small space to a big space, the whole space would not be reached, so it would not be surjective. So in order to have both surjectivity and injectivity, we'll need to be going from both the domain and the codomain have to have the same dimension, which equals the dimension of the image of the transformation, or TV. The transformed V equals the whole space. Matrix-wise, this would look like a square matrix, because a square matrix means we're going from, if it's n by n, this means we're going from Rn to Rn, a leading one in every single row and column. Now let's apply our knowledge. First, let's show that this transformation T is linear and surjective. First, let's show that this transformation T is linear. 
To do this, let's define two matrices. Let's check closedness under addition. Now let's apply our transformation. Since this is just addition, we can change the order of our terms. And clearly, this is the same as the transformed version of x plus the transformed version of y. Next, let's define a scalar, say e, in order to check closedness under scalar multiplication. This is the same as e x1 plus e x3, which we can factor out the e from both terms and rewrite this as e times the transformed version of x. Thus, our transformation is linear. To show surjectivity, we need to show that the image of the transformation is equal to the entire codomain, which in this case is R, real numbers. Well, when would this be true? In order to get just one number, A, we can write this as A, B, 0, 0, where A is any real number. This clearly shows that the image of the transformation spans the entire codomain, R. Lastly, we're asked to find the dimension of the kernel of the transformation. Well, we've just found the dimension of the image of the transformation, one-dimensional, and we're, we're told that the dimension of this vector space, V, is 3. According to the dimension theorem, the dimension of our domain is equal to the dimension of the image of the transformation plus the dimension of the kernel of the transformation. The dimension of the kernel of the transformation is 3 minus 1 or 2. To find the actual basis of this kernel, that wouldn't be too hard. So the kernel of T would be all matrices in our set V that when they are transformed, they go to the zero vector, which in R would just be zero. So A plus C equals zero, which means that zero is also B plus D. Let's solve these two equations, A plus C equals zero. This means A equals negative C and B equals negative D. So the matrices in the kernel of the transformation would be in the form. We could rewrite this as a span, the span of two matrices, and the basis for the kernel of this transformation would be those two matrices. As we expected, the dimension of the kernel is two.